So hopefully you've seen our YouTube video on why software vendors love embedding pan intelligence into their software. If you haven't, do take a look. I'm going to go into a bit more detail on some of the more uh, unique features, uh, the things that we can enable you to do within uh, data insights in your application. So the first thing you can see on your screen is actually we have a live stream from NASA, not necessarily something you would want to do, but essentially not only can you embed us within your application, but we can also embed you. So there's a, a real single synchronicity in the way that our applications can work with yours in the fact that we can be very flexible around how we surface components. There are lots of other areas in which we specialise, so I've got a few features here that I'd like to take you through. So the first one is called application chaining, and if you think about the way browser-based applications work, users want to be able to drill down into some exception information, but actually also go directly to the source of that information to perhaps do something with it. So we call that drill to URL or application chaining. And what we're doing here, if I jump into the edit chart screen, is we're actually drilling down to a URL. And in this case, we're drilling through various paths of data and passing through, in this case, a variable, which is stock description. So this could be a unique ID associated with your application, and it will launch that format source for your users. That means that they can work through those exceptions and those details and work through directly in your application where they need to attend to those. So really useful piece of workflow functionality. We also have something called dynamic drill and nobody really takes a particularly linear path through data. Um, in this case we have some information about retail transactions that have been made in store but also uh, to the right of that we have retail transactions on the web and actually when we look at those we're more interested in perhaps what type of application or in this case device they came to the website on and uh, when it's the store which store. The way we're doing that is we're using something called dynamic drilling. Again if I edit that chart and show you how that works works. We're able to create rule paths where when people select specific pieces of data, it can take them on a journey to exactly where they want to go, really applying those rules so that you're um, making sure that their uh, experience of the software is really seamless in taking them on that journey. So we call that rule-based or dynamic drilling. Another thing that really is liked by a lot of our software vendors is the ability to go even further in really simple editing. So yes, we can take people into the chart designer screen, but we also have something like object swap. This is where we apply a category filter or a page level filter to a particular dimension. So in this case, we have the X axis is um, sales by month and the legend is day of the week. And I've got lots of different objects here. So maybe we're looking at sales by day of the week, or maybe we're looking at sales by a particular year. Perhaps we want to look at information which is sales by payment method and so on. So a really easy way to give people what feels like chart editing functionality at a very kind of consumption layer for them to be able to create and edit that particular chart on their screen and equally get that out to PDF, Excel and download the data. Another thing that's very unique to us is update, uh, updating data within the actual dashboarding application itself. So this is where we enable a user to be able to edit particular cells, and this could be based on an option set or pick list, or actually we could allow them to simply type in and change the value. Once they've done that, they can update that. Now we never update the data directly. What we do allow you to do is pass that out as a web services call, and you can pick that up and apply that web services call, accepting that and uploading the data. So it's a way for us to use the uh, data visualization layer to perhaps give non-users of your core system an ability to interact with that data and inform it. Other areas, just a little bit of simple what-if modeling. So again, if people are applying some basic changes to the existing data, again, this is not changing data at source. It is simply applying a rule to the information and re-rendering it on the page so people can see exactly what's happening. Simple what-if modeling, we call that. Thank you for listening to this video. Please try our software free, valuation licenses are available and contact us to find out how you can be starting to give your customers self-service insights tomorrow. Thank you.